All righty, now that we have MySQL Workbench installed, we want to connect to the database we created over at AWS, our RDS database. So in order to do that, we're going to click right here on this little plus icon for MySQL connection. Now you may notice there is a little uh, message here, MySQL Workbench could not, de could not detect any MySQL server running. There is no MySQL server running on this server. We're connecting to our RDS from this server to another host out there in the cloud. And that's why we're going to uh, establish a connection right here. So click the little plus icon and we are going to name this connection. I'm going to actually name it the, the name of the database we created. I believe I called it my first SQL. Um, leave it as standard TCP IP, uh, the connection method here. Uh, the port, we're going to leave that as 3306. That is the standard MySQL port. That is also the port uh, we enabled in the inbound rule for our security group that we applied to the database we created over at AWS. Uh, the username, uh, if you can recall, it was admin. We left that as the default. And we also uh, created a password. Now, you may remember your password. You may not. You may have uh, put it in your notes file that you're keeping information about your database on. Uh, otherwise, if you do remember it, click on Store in Vault and type in the password. The one piece of information we're missing here is the host name, otherwise known as the endpoint or the host, uh, but it's the location of the server. And we need to go grab that from AWS. So I'm gonna go over to my AWS console. I'm already at RDS. I went from the AWS management console, clicked on RDS, and now I'm gonna click on databases. And here's my database that I set up previously. Status is available, it is running. So click on the database name there, scroll down just a little bit, and you will see the connectivity and security pieces that you need. So the endpoint right here is my, right here, my first SQL dot and this domain name looking thing. So you're gonna to wanna to copy that. And just take note, the port is 3306, like we thought. And let's save this information in our little notes file the endpoint and the port. Good information to keep. So we don't have to keep going back to AWS. We can keep this notes file handy. And then once we have that endpoint, let's go back to our uh, new connection that we're setting up. Let's paste it in the host name. And we should be good to connect. So we can test the connection and it was successful. So we can click OK, but let's click OK, and this should uh, connect us to our database. Um, actually, it did not connect us to the database. It just created the connection here. So I think we can just click on this, and yep, then we can connect to our database. So here we are. We are in. Now, this central area, this middle area of the screen you see is actually a query editor. This is where we can write our SQL queries uh, to look at data, insert data, delete data, update data. Uh, but we have to have data to do that with. And currently we don't. In fact, we don't even have a schema set up. Now, what is a schema? A schema actually is a database or a collection of tables. Now, you might think, well, that's what we set up at AWS. We set up a database, but then a database is a collection of schemas and a schema is a collection of tables. Sometimes we use the terms interchangeable schema and database, but at any rate, we don't have a schema and therefore we don't have any tables currently in this database. So the first thing we wanna do is set up a schema. And we're gonna do that using the graphical user interface here. So we're gonna click this little guy here, the plus button on the create a new schema in the connected server. So hit that, give it a name, that's something simple. I'm gonna say DB1. And rather than select the default here, scroll down and go to the very bottom, UTF8 MB4. And for the default collation, same thing, UTF8 MB4, 
but underscore general. So scroll down to you see, tell you see UTF-8 MB4 underscore general and click apply. Now this didn't do anything just yet. It actually just gives you the SQL statement that will execute to actually create the schema. Uh, it, it, like I said, it hasn't executed until you hit apply. So we're just gonna hit apply here and take note, SQL script was successfully applied to the database. So we have a new schema. So we can finish here. All right, we can also close this. Uh, and now we're back to our query editor. Now, again, we don't have any data stored anywhere because we don't have any tables set up. In fact, you can click the triangle here and get a drop down. You see it says tables, but if you double click on that, there are no tables. So now we need to create a table. And I'm gonna do that with a create table statement. And I will post this create table statement in the comments. Okay, let's execute this. The easiest way to do it is just to hit the little lightning bolt here. And let's see, create table, zero rows affected, uh, no error warning down here. So now, did we get a table? Let's see. So you hit the little refresh button, and then you see the customer's table. And then if you expand the customer's table, you can see information about the table. The only thing we really know about now is the columns, sometimes called fields, but here's the columns. Now let's get rid of this query, just delete it. Now the easiest SQL statement is a select statement and it's a select star. Select star from, you can just go over here and double click on customers and run this. It's going to throw up a result set. So I'm getting an error, no database selected. So make sure you have your database selected. So double click on your database. See that it turns to a bold font. So DB1, now let's rerun the query and see what happens. There we go. So we've got a table here. It's, it's small, but you can see that there, there's some column headers right here. Customer ID, first name, last name, city, state, zip. No, 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 no. So nothing is in the table. Now, in the next video, we're going to go over how to insert data into a table. And then we're also going to go over how to delete and how to update that data. All right. Until the next video, we'll see you later.